Jana. I can't believe I'm finally saying this, but Descendants came out. It is here. It is a part of our lives. I personally have been waiting for the sequel to Descendants ever since the very first one where Mal's eyes flickered green and she said, you didn't think it was the end of the story, did you? And I was like, it's not the end. I firmly demand a Descendants 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, as long as they can go. I firmly demand that we get more. I am 21 and I am absolutely obsessed with Descendants. I don't know what I would do without it. It is one of my favorite movies ever, not just decoms. So of course I was going to make a video talking about Descendants 2 and what I thought about it. I watched it more than I probably should have. <laughs> The last time I watched it, I actually made a list of my thoughts so that I could talk about them without missing anything, and I still could miss something, but this list should be my guide. But if I'm going to talk about Descendants, I might as well go all the way and commit 100% like the Descender that I am. Beware, forswear, replace the old with cool hair. <laughs> this is my Mal wig from when I cosplayed, kind of cosplayed as a Mal. The only thing that made it a cosplay was the wig, otherwise it was a Disney bound. It's kind of not in as good of shape because I've had it packed away for two years, but it'll do. <laughs> so I have my bullet list of notes here and I'm just gonna dive right in. Waste Be Wicked ended up being a dream sequence which made so much sense. For a while I was trying to figure out why they were wreaking havoc on Oridon. I figured it was because even though they chose good, they still have bad roots. But the whole part about Mother always knowing best and stuff and show her pass every test, that kind of threw that out the window because I was like, if you're good, why are you still so obsessed with what your parents want? But it ended up being a dream sequence, which I really liked, and I liked that it was kind of Mal zoning out while the press was like, Mal, Mal, Mal. I really liked what they did to Mal in Evie's dorm room. In the first movie, when they walk in, it's super pink, and it just, it doesn't feel like Mal and Evie, but in this movie, it felt a lot more like them. I love that Maleficent was in a tank and it said, don't feed my mom. <laughs> I love that Evie has this fashion clothing business for Oridon. The room seems like a place where they can be a lot more comfortable now versus in the first movie, and I don't know, I liked that. Jay and Carlos's dorm, however, I felt like took a step back. Not it, It's more personalized in this movie, but it was bigger in the first movie. Am I the only one that thinks it was bigger and they had the TV with the video games, but I didn't see that in this one, or did they have TV? I don't know, I think it was smaller. I was a little confused about Mal's eyes turning green. Does it happen when she's stressed or mad, or is it just like, I don't know. I was a little confused about what exactly it meant. It seemed like it was the aisle calling to her, but it happened whenever she felt like stressed or overwhelmed or upset or angry. I don't know if there's truth to that or if I'm just making that up. <laughs> I want more Doug. I love Evie and Doug. I love their dynamic. And I was really sad that we didn't get as much Doug as I wanted in this one. He was only in a couple of scenes. But I love that he supports Evie in her business and like really helps her out with that. It's so sweet. Apparently, ogres like cheese puffs. So somebody go to Universal and give Shrek cheese puffs and we'll test the theory out. <laughs> Carlos and Jane, I was so happy about that. In the first one, I totally shipped them. Especially in Set It Off in the first one where Carlos and Jay brought Jane up on stage. Like, I know Jay was there, but all I could see was Carlos and Jane. I'm so happy for Jane and I'm so happy for Carlos and I hope we see more of them in the next movie, which there will be a next movie. There has to be. Their scenes in this movie were so cute. Like, when she was like, I'm the luckiest girl and he was like, I'm the luckiest girl, I mean guy. <laughs> I like that they were kind of nervous around each other, but like you could tell they were friends, but they wanted to be more, and it was just really cute and really nice. I liked how they explained Audrey's absence. I was wondering if they were even going to mention it or if they were just gonna pretend like she wasn't there. It made sense for her to be on a trip, and I like how it affected Chad. <laughs> Speaking of Chad, I liked that they emphasized his not having so much there there. Like in the first movie when Doug says, not a whole lot of there there. In the first movie, we didn't really get to see that. We just saw him being a jerk. But in this movie, we definitely saw that. He's not the brightest bulb. I like that the villain kids don't take anything from him. They're like, Chad, stop this. Oh, poor Chad, he, he struggles. 
loved Lonnie's character development and how she's athletic like her mom. She's such a cool role model for kids. She is fierce, she is brave, she is strong, she's determined. I liked that we saw more of Lonnie and I liked that side of Lonnie. That was super cool. I loved the Be Our Guest references at Mal and Ben's picnic. I thought that was so clever. I love little things like that that are like little shout outs to us Disney geeks. The aisle. The aisle is so cool. I love the colors and the vibes. What a cool set. I want to go on that set. That is, ugh, it's insane. It's so cool. Gil. Gil, why is he so great? My favorite lines in this movie were from Gil. <laughs> I, I'm so serious. I felt like when they were promoting Descendants 2, we learned a lot about Uma and Harry and even Dizzy, but not so much Gil. But he really shined in this movie. I thought he was hilarious. He had amazing one-liners. Definitely a fan of Gil as a character. And can I just say, I was super impressed with China and McLean. I will admit I was not the biggest fan of Ant Farm back in the day. So very unfairly, I felt like I kind of just didn't pay as much attention to China as I should have been because she is a queen. Some of those line deliveries that she gave, like ugh, the one where she says, life's not fair. And when she said, you don't get to win every time, I was like, oh my gosh. Uma is kind of scary. I'm intimidated by Uma. China's performance was just so spot on. I don't have anything negative to say about it. It was so good. It was so much more than I could have even expected. She's so scary and fierce and intimidating, but also like Uma has so many layers that I feel like we can keep peeling back. What's My Name is my jam. The dancing is so on point. Everyone in that song, I'm not just talking about like the lead characters, I'm talking about the ensemble as well, the choreography, everyone involved with that number. 10 out of 10. I also liked that it built character. We could totally tell that Uma is the leader. We could totally tell that Harry is kind of second in command. And then we can totally tell that Gil is the punching bag. They make Gil into a chair, which by the way, I didn't even realize was Gil. Like I thought that was an actual chair in all the promos and trailers, but it was Gil, which is just, that's funny. <laughs> Here is the true question. This is my number one question coming out of Descendants 2. So Maleficent is a lizard. She is in, Mal's room and then when Mal goes back to the aisle she takes her in a box to the aisle but then where does she go? Where did Maleficent go? Did she go back to Oridon or is she still on the aisle? I guess she must still be on the aisle because we didn't see Mal take anything back. So maybe that's something that we'll see in the next one? I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments where you think Maleficent went. <laughs> find Maleficent. Hashtag find Maleficent 20k17. 20k17? 2k17? I don't, let's move on. When Mal first gets to the aisle and she's riding through, I love the little references to other villains like Hades. I saw something for Hades and stuff like that. I thought that was really fun. Dizzy, Dizzy is so precious and I really want to cosplay as her. I've never really cosplayed unless you count my Mal one. Um, I, ah, that dress, it's so good. I loved her entire area and her personality and she's so precious. <sighs> Chillin' Like a Villain is a jam. It's been stuck in my head since the movie came out, and I loved Ben trying to dance like the VKs and he couldn't quite get it. He didn't quite have the swag, but that was great. Gil's line about his dad where he was like, you know, he's quick, slick, and his neck is incredibly thick. That was genius. My other favorite Gil line is after What's My Name when she says, they will remember the name, and he says, Shrimpy. <laughs> I told you, he has the best line. Oh, Harry Hook. <laughs> I love how wonderfully weird Harry Hook is. That, like Dove says, the spark of insanity, I am obsessed with it. I've only ever seen Thomas in The Lodge and oh my goodness, he shined in this movie. He went above and beyond. I love the quirkiness, the weirdness of his character. It's so delicious. Like that's a weird word to describe it, but I love it. I so badly wanted more of it. I want more Harry Hook because wow, 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 wow. Two emotional lines in this movie that really got me were when Ben says to Mal, don't quit us, Mal. And when Dizzy says, at least one of us had our dreams come true to Evie. Oh, sweet little Dizzy. That was so sad. That that hurt my heart. Space Between was so nice. I love that there was a best friend ballad because I'm fortunate enough to have a great best friend and I feel like that can be our anthem and it's just, it was really nice. I love the Ben and Uma scene on the ship. I don't know what about it that I really liked, but I really liked it. I thought it was an interesting dynamic to watch and like hear their sides and how they interact with each other and he's tied up and she's like, 
I thought that was good. Did anybody else notice during It's Going Down that there was a pirate in the ensemble that kind of resembled Jake from Jake and the Neverland Pirates? Because I saw that, and I don't know if it was just me, but I totally saw it. It's Going Down gave me such Hamilton vibes. Right off the bat, I was like, this is Hamilton. Am I watching Hamilton or am I watching Descendants 2? And I thought that was great. Very relevant. It was such a cool number with all the swords and like the beats and stuff that they had. That was great. And I love the tension between Mal and Uma and Mal and Harry. There's such great tension between those characters. It makes me wonder if they have a history. I know China and Dove have been saying that Uma and Mal were ex-lovers, which I buy. I totally buy that. But I also I also think that Harry and Mal had some sort of romantic thing. So we'll see about that. That was so epic and the sword fight, it was like, it was great. I really thought though that Uma was gonna leave Harry in the water and like not help him up. <laughs> Which is just a little dark for a Disney movie probably. I love that Carlos initiated girl talk and that Jay was trying to be super cool but like he's really caring. That moment between Jay and Mal, that was so sweet. That was everything I ever wanted because Jay to me is the big brother figure. He's so loyal and protective of his friends and it's so great. So I was glad that we got a teeny scene of that. I'd like to see more. Lonnie as the team captain, that was a wonderful a cinematic moment. Jay found that loophole and I was all about it. I loved the battle at the end with Mal as the dragon. That was a cool tie to their parents because this movie was clearly about the kids and not about the parents, but I liked that they kind of went back to like their parents thing. I don't know, it was cool to see like an Ursula Maleficent fight. That ending though, so much happened in like 20 minutes. I was shocked when Uma came out with Ben. I thought, oh, he gave her a second chance, she's here to like redeem herself, but then they were in love and I was shocked. That, it was a whirlwind. <laughs> the ending was a whirlwind. So much happened and my brain was so confused and I was, I, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even talk about it. It was so, it was crazy. I was so glad when Evie brought up Dizzy and I'm so excited to see Dizzy in the next movie. The ending number, I was emotional. It was so full of heart. Like every time I hear it, it pulls like at my heartstrings. It, it hits something. I don't know. To me, it's really emotional and motivational and it's great. So dude, <laughs> I was skeptical about the whole talking dog thing, but it kind of grew on me and it kind of worked in the end. I was worried about it because I was worried it would cheapen the movie and like make it seem like it's more geared towards kids and like make it taken less seriously. That sentence barely made sense, but I was very skeptical. But when he was used as an example with the wand, that's when it kind of grew on me. Like it wasn't that bad. <laughs> the more I watch the movie, the more it grows on me and the more okay I am with it. So I don't know, is he gonna talk in the next one? Because they didn't really solve it. So he might be talking in the next one. The pacing of this movie was insane. It was so good. It moved so fast, but at the same time, at the right speed. The sets and the costumes I could go on about for days, they were gorgeous. They were the colors, the the information we get from sets and costumes about characters and about setting and about the story is just astounding and so fresh and wonderful to see. I'm so glad that we got more Jay and Carlos. I felt like in the first movie they were a little bit snubbed. So I'm interesting to see how they continue to develop, especially I feel like Car- Okay, my camera overheated. It got a little too excited, <laughs> but as I was saying, I really felt like Carlos got a lot of development in this movie, but I still feel like Jay needs a little more. And I feel like he could have such a bigger role. I love the development they gave Carlos this time. I thought his storyline was so cute and so nice. But what I want in Descendants 3 is more Gil, Harry, and Doug. Those three need more time. I would also love to see new characters. I love seeing these new characters. There are so many great Disney characters and villains out there that I feel like need to have their children represented. I'm not saying that they should cast me, but I'm kind of saying they should cast me. <laughs> I would love to be Snow White's daughter. Honestly, I am going to start a campaign for me to be in Descendants 3. What a dream that would be. There's never been a role I've coveted more than a role in Descendants 3, especially a villain role. I know I said that I would be the daughter of Snow White, that's just going off of what I look like. But seriously, playing a villain and like having the ability to play around with the quirkiness and the weirdness and the layers, like there's so many layers. Oh, it's a role of a lifetime and the people that get to be a part of this are so blessed and so lucky to be able to play around with these characters. And I'm so glad that they give it their all and they give us more every time. I love how far they go, especially like Thomas playing Harry Hook and China playing Uma and Dove playing Mal. They just they go so far and they bring that insanity and it's so 
delicious. <laughs> I'm so here for it. I'm so here for a Descendants 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I cannot get enough. Let me know what you thought about Descendants. Feel free to tweet this to the cast if you so please. I love you all. Stay beautiful, you people. Bye. 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 What's my name? Bye. 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 It's going down. <laughs>